All right, it's bacon day. I've had that curing for almost two weeks now. I just fired up my Bradley smoker. Uh, this is a cut. Uh, the bacon I'm making is not belly bacon. As far as I know, when you make bacon from other cuts, other than back bacon, which has its own name, if you make it from oddball cuts, then it's called backboard bacon, or buckboard, sorry, buckboard bacon. And uh, so that's what I'm making technically. This is an idea I got when I was a butcher. Uh, this is a cut of a shoulder that we called the eye of the shoulder. The eye of the shoulder is a combination of the butt. It's, it's most of the butt, but there's also a piece of this muscle that gets cut off onto the picnic. Normally you cut a shoulder into the butt in the picnic and it cuts this muscle in half. Most of it goes to the butt and some of it goes to the picnic. And we used to get old Italian guys coming in a fair bit asking for a custom cut and they would ask for this. And what they were doing is they were making their own prosciutto out of it. So I figured if it was good enough for the old Italian guys, it was good enough for me to make regular bacon out of. It's a different shape than this. It's been jammed in this container for two weeks now. So it's kind of taken on a square shape. And that's not blood that you see splashing around. That's actually mostly maple syrup. Um, it's maple syrup is the main... Uh, Maple syrup is the main liquid that I've got it in. There's a lot of pepper, some salt, of course, and some curing salt, which is the sodium uh, nitrite or whatever, the prog powder number one, as they call it. Um, and I basically, you flip it every day. You just have it in there. You see it fits really nicely. It's mostly covered. And I just, just like I flipped it there now, you go in every day and you just take it out. You give it a flip like that and uh, when you're curing with nitrites you can let it cure up to two weeks some say even longer if you're just using regular salt you want to stick with one week so let's see if we can get a good look at this muscle like I said it's kind of taken on the shape of that container now there's where there would be a bone going in here um, but it's really, if you if you cut this up, there's a lot of really good fat in there. You definitely want fat in your bacon. And uh, I'm going to do it this side up with the, this uh, fat on the top so it'll drip down through. And it will fit on one rack in there. It's relatively thick. I'm going to try to just kind of squeeze it out some like this to make it bigger and flatter. So that it won't take an extremely long time to... Uh, to smoke but then uh, that's more in line with it's definitely not normally a square piece of meat it's only really square because of the container it's been in so uh, it's just a pretty standard cure I got rosemary uh, rosemary maple syrup salt and pepper and the curing salt and I believe that's all I have in there just try to flatten it out some and that's basically it we'll show you how it goes during the day all right so it fits on one rack in there I'm putting it on a lower rack to uh, get it up to temperature the thing is heating up here uh, you load the pucks here I'm gonna do cherry and apple is what I'm gonna smoke it with all for I'm gonna try three hours and with it on a lower rack like this, even with it being a bit thicker than regular belly bacon, I think we should get it uh, cooked right through. I'm going to aim for like 180 or something like that Fahrenheit. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I'll keep you posted. Alright, it's been about two and a half hours. We're up to about 85 Celsius or 190 Fahrenheit, uh, 180 maybe. And we're just going to have a peek here. Woo-wee! Let's see. Well, I should have grabbed my thermometer to get a read of that and uh, see what the temperature is. It's looking pretty good. Uh, the outside tastes good, very mapley. Uh, I'm going to grab my thermometer. Hold on. Alright, I got my thermopen here. 
I broke down and bought one. I actually don't really think it's worth it for cooking. For brewing, it's for brewing, it's good. Oh, that's still pretty low temperature in there. I would recommend one for brewing, but I wouldn't recommend one for just cooking. It's kind of a waste of money. Doesn't it say the temperature on the front? Yeah, it does. Well, one thing, it's right-handed, and I'm not right-handed. Another thing, it's ginormous. It's just way too big. Anyway, it's got a good hour. We'll check it in an hour. Alright, it's about three and a half hours now. We're up to like 90 Celsius, almost 200 Fahrenheit. We're just going to check the temperature again. You can see I moved it up. It's always iffy in here whether it's warmer. I know heat rises, but sometimes it's warmer closer to the heat source. But at very least, I know that there's my thermometer probe. So the temperature that this reads is going to be about what it is right there at that point in the rack. So that's why I decided to go with that. We're just going to give it a stick here. See what we got right in there. Well, we're still low. Uh, I would like to have it a lot higher than that, and I don't want a whole lot more smoke on it. So I might give it another hour smoke, we'll see, and then go smokeless for a while and see if I can get it up to temperature. Or I could just take it out and throw it in the oven in order to go smokeless. Alright, we'll see how it goes. It's looking pretty good and it's smelling pretty good, so that, that much is awesome. Alright, it is about 50 minutes later, the temperature is high, I've gone easy on the smoke, I've let the pucks run out so you can see it's not very smoky in there, just trying to get it up to temperature. Let's see where we are, right in the middle there. We're still pretty low, so uh, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do about this, so I'm going to just... Uh, keep it in there and uh, maybe wrap it up or something to keep it from drying out too much we'll see I'm just kind of looking at this little piece right here and thinking I gotta try that so let's see mm. we're gonna give that a taste mmm oh damn that is pretty friggin good it's really mapley. Yeah, definitely going to be good uh, buckboard bacon. All right, so what I've decided is that it has enough smoke on it. It's not fully cooked, so I'm going to wrap it in tin foil, and I'm just going to throw it in the oven and uh, finish it off in the oven. Uh, try to get that core temperature up to like uh, 170 Fahrenheit or somewhere in that ballpark, whatever that is, maybe 80 Celsius or something like that. I, I'm just guessing at the Celsius temperature there. So I'm going to wrap her up and throw it in the oven. Uh, it doesn't need any more smoke, otherwise I would keep it in here to get it up to temperature. Um, Alright, looks like the lighting is going to be accommodated for by the camera. Good. So I let this uh, rest overnight in the fridge wrapped up in this tin foil here and I just cut it open and sliced off a few slices. I'm going to fry them up. That's what your cross section looks like. It's already cooked actually because it got up to... Uh, oh, I forgot to mention I finished it in the oven. I wrapped it up in foil and finished it in the oven until I got up to a 155 inside, which was high enough. It's not what I was looking for, but it was high enough. So, that's that. Well, it's really, really good. The maple flavor has come through spectacularly. It's the best maple flavor I think I've ever gotten in bacon. And I think it's uh, the two-week cure that uh, really did it.